We'll talk more about some other issues in the oil and gas industry, but let's uh, bring in what happened just about three days ago, Labor Day, May the 1st in Nigeria, where there are still a lot of issues concerning the labor market in Nigeria, in particular Nigeria's job creation. Michael Adelaide is a human uh, resource development expert and a job creation analyst and is live with us here in the studio. Good morning. Good morning, thank you for having Good me. to have you. Thank you. Uh, have you ever participated in a May Day Labor Day rally? Ever? Uh, I can't remember the last time I actually participated, but it's been a long time. And obviously then, that was when the Labor Congress in this country were very focused and effective, but not these days. No, not even in the, during your student days, school days? I, I did. I mean, like I said, I did. But that was when the NLC was still very focused and effective. But what you see these days is actually very different to what we used to have then. The NLC used to be a pressure group, or it's supposed to be a pressure group, who actually um, be the voice of the Nigerian workers. But I think they're now beginning to turn from the pressure group to become a political party, because that's, this is, that's why you have this faction that goes on these days where the government ha actually have the access to infiltrate into the NLC to have them disintegrated so they can actually be focused on what they're supposed to be focused on, which is Niger the Nigerian workers. Uh, in your opinion, what do you think uh, they should focus on, the NSA should focus on? The welfare of the Nigerian workers. Now, we, 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 we've been looking in, into what happened in recent days, like a couple of days ago, about the national minimum wage. Now, historically, national minimum wage should be periodically revealed. Now, you don't have, just have national minimum wage and then just leave it for many years before you now begin to look into it. It should be periodically revealed. Now, my question to um, the government is very simple. Um, what are the indices used to calculate national minimum wage? What are the empirical evidences that you have that justify that 18,000 Naira is actually um, sustainable for Nigerian workers. When we say minimum wage, yeah. is it for the civil service or the private sector? A good question. I was going to um, turn this to the government as well. There is a difference between national minimum wage and national living wage. Okay? National minimum wage is a, leg is a legal remuneration that an employer should legally pay to the workers. Okay? National living wage is actually calculated using um, the cost of living. Okay? Now, the question I'm having is, you have a universal and overall national minimum wage. And also, don't forget, when you actually calculate national minimum wage, it should be segmented, right? If, according to age, 16 to 18 years old, for example, 18 to 20 years, for example, uh, 20 to 24, 25 years, okay, then from 25 years above. It's because if you don't do that and you have it across the board, 18,000. Now, are you saying to me, apprentice who just want to learn and want to earn wages, 18,000, then people who have been working for the last 10, 20 years or whatever in the civil service at the same level, maybe about 50 years old on 18,000, you don't do that. When we talk about minimum wage, 90% of the time or 99% we seem to focus more on the civil service. And this is a, a, a subset of the economy that the contribution to the GDP is just about 3%. Uh, um, you shouldn't be surprised about that because um, in every economy, I mean, every um, good economy, it's not the government's business to do business. They have no business to do business. They're meant to be a policy, uh, I mean, implement policies, regulate, and so on and so forth. But in this economy, this climb, is the government that actually run the whole show. So obviously, the majority of the business that goes on, if the government stops to pump out money for infrastructure development, you find that the economy goes into recession. I mean, the private sector are predominantly or primarily meant to be running the economy. But in this climb, it's the government who has the largest share. So obviously, when such policy is going to be implemented or be thrown to the public, they focus more onto the public sector, which is the civil servants. Now, so, so, so what we have now is the 18,000. For me, I don't, I don't know how they came about that figure.
Now they don't take inflationary um, uh, indices into, 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 into place. They don't know how the market operates, the demand and supply, and so on and so forth. You don't just throw a figure and say that's a minimum wage. And even with that 18,000 naira, I'm so shocked and embarrassed that some locals of some state governments can't even pay that money. It's, 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 it's just unbelievable. In, in your opinion, where do you think the issue really lies? And I keep asking this question. We have our unemployment market rising, and we have existing workers on the minimum wage, yeah. and we have the population growth trumping even our economic growth <laughs> and, mm. and the minimum wage. So yeah. we have this very top, bottom, heavy at the top, pressing down when they ought to be the other way around so that yeah. we can get out of this very heavy load. So what do you think we should focus on? Job creation uh, as an issue. Um, to if, I don't have, if I don't have a job, let me help. If yeah. I don't have a job, so whether it is 25, 30 or 45 or 18,000, I need some money in my pocket. Uh -huh. So whether it is minimum wage at 18,500 or at 45, I need some money. Absolutely. Good. Uh, so uh, how do you think we're going to balance this? Um, I think it, it does go down to um, skill acquisition. Now, people will say there are no jobs out there. I can tell you, this is my industry. There are jobs out there. There are a lot of jobs out there, especially in the private sector. But what we have, the problem we have in what we face in this country is lack of skill. Right? Now, we should begin to look into skill acquisition where training comes in. Right? It's not just um, the private sector alone that are supposed to be focusing on training of the employees. The government also should invest heavily in that, in that area as well. So training leads to skill acquisition, and skill acquisition leads into job creation. You, you've got a lot more to explain to yeah. us in, in that. Well, let's, uh, uh, we're going to go on a break. We'll come back uh, to you. But let's get back to uh, the top story. Michael Adelaide, uh, human resource development uh, expert and job creation analyst here. Let's uh, get back to the big story. The central bank uh, overnight hammered 18 commercial banks for their failure to sell special SMEs FX intervention funds of $100 million weekly over a four-week period. All the banks non-compliant and are out of the sport and forward FX CBN intervention windows until they show sufficient evidence of the allocation of existing FX monies they've received from the financial regulator. The statement says only eight commercial banks were in partial compliant with the CBN directive on SME's FX funds allocation. So the banks that have utilized the SME funds will be allocated all of the $100 million that the central bank sold on Tuesday, May the 2nd, at the wholesale FX uh, auction. The central bank says a survey reveals that SMEs continue to face untold hardships created by the banks, making it difficult for them to access foreign exchange. We'll be back in two.